I really do you do. feel do you feel that the art market in general and it's a really big box doesn't want you? A oh, brutal question. <laughs> uh, maybe I don't know. Rompada, rompada, also known as thunderslap. I think I think uh, I did. I think Thunderswap is very similar to Relampada. With me today, uh, I have two guests with similar names and similar work areas. Sofia Moll, the storyteller. Yeah, yeah, Woo! yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the artist, Sophie Bainton. Did I say the name correctly? You did. Well done. Bainton. 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 Yeah. All right. My first question for you is... In what way does Madeira inspire your work? <laughs> I don't know. Who wants to who wants to go forward first? Uh, as a storyteller, uh, Madeira is teeming with stories because it's this tiny little island in the middle of the sea that many, many people crossed when they passed here. And then some would stay and then they would go off over onto the other side of the world and then they would come back and they would bring plants and mm. things and spices and things with them and then some would stay some would not uh, and so Madeira is full 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 of stories and there are traditional stories from Madeira that you can see that have come from all over the world yeah, and yeah. that is super super interesting it's a very multi multicultural island because yeah. of the of the way that is situated in the in the middle of the atlantic yeah even even me that i'm from here and you too as well you yeah. you born were, here you were born here yeah uh even though i'm from here i don't know most of the stories that are to this island people people think usually think that this island is very tiny but in a way, it's very big. It is. Biggest, it, b bigger than probably co a continent of, of stories, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I, I usually say that if you ironed Madeira out, ah, it would be well, huge. Yeah, for sure. Like Atlantis, probably. <laughs> very probably. <laughs> and you? Uh, does Madeira, me. Yeah, yeah. Does Madeira inspire your work? Parts of it, yes. Um, sort of the unknown parts of it. I like, obviously, it's so different from England, and I think that's, mm. I wouldn't necessarily say it's Madeira on the whole that inspires my work, but it's the sort of the unknown, because growing up in England, of course, I think I'm very familiar, and that becomes very boring after a while. I see. So I just, I like the fact that I'm always surprised, you know. I love to go to sort of little restaurants in Comarcia and see a different type of person that I would never have experienced before and eat a different kind of food and generally have a, a different atmosphere. And that inspires me. So, but that could be here, that could be in Lisbon, that could be, yeah, yeah, travel, yeah. travel is important. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately not happening at the moment. How long have you been here? Four years. Four years. Four years, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, and why Madeira? Um, because my uncle was here and other family and I wanted to get out of London for the summer and paint and they said well come here don't go off I was going to go to Italy and they said no 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 come here you'll, you'll enjoy yourself here and then I had an exhibition and then I signed up for another one and then yeah and so it's just sort of one thing after the next thing after the next thing I kept on saying I was going to go and I kept on saying well maybe I'll just stay a little bit longer and you stayed <laughs> and I stayed and, I stayed. and, and you're still here with us ah yes exactly yeah <laughs> Very good. Tell, tell me about your work. Uh, I've been I've been uh, searching uh, for your name around the internet, and uh, uh, you you say that you are a very visual artist, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you your art is very deeply personal. Yes. Um, tell me about that. Why is your art uh, very dreamy? Like uh, it explores longing, nostalgia. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of uh, events in your life inspire w your work? I think, uh, well, excuse yeah, yeah. my question because it's very broad and no, I know, how do we, <laughs> what is art? Oh my God, how do I explain what's art? It's literally the hardest thing for me to explain. I see. That's why I paint it. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, you know, realistically, Sophia most probably could explain my work as a, a lady of words. Yeah, of course. Far better. <laughs> Sophia is very... Oh God, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I knew you were going to ask something like this. 
Um, I on it, it's it's so hard to explain. I really don't know. It's what is my? It's a compulsion, I suppose. All right. A I compulsion. have to do it. I I yeah. tried to teach uh, Sophie Portuguese, and it proved absolutely almost impossible. Almost impossible. <laughs> Because she <laughs> is right. so so visual. So visual. Everything about her mm -hmm. is working on the visual, noticing details, uh, moving things yeah. around to make them prettier. It's all visual. And so concentrating on something um. auditory was not happening. No. No. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa. But we did drink some nice wine. Oh, yeah. Some ah, you so like wine. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was talking with uh, Sophia about what should we... What is this? Oh, oh, mommy? Oh. What? No, it's not mine. Hmm. We have a we have a secret telephone inside the studio. It sounds in here, but it's it not in be here. In but it's actually there. Yeah, it's inside. Well, probably yeah. is Alex's phone. So, what do you guys think it is? It's his mother, his father, something about <laughs> work, probably. Hmm. As someone saying you forgot your phone somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. You forgot your phone, Alex. We should tell a story about what what is this phone call but actually. it is in here or is it just coming through the speaker yeah it's yeah. coming through the speaker oh it stopped <laughs> nice okay everything can happen in Relampada as you may know <laughs> it's interesting that we have uh, you two here in this tub beautiful tub <laughs> we have a very visual person and a very vocal person is that correct yeah 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 Sophia tell me about your work you're uh, You're also a, a a speech therapist, a translator, and you you thought you were here because you were translating uh, what I what I tell Sof Sophie in Portuguese to translate to to, Ning to English. But as you can see, yeah, no, no yeah, no. yeah. I was a little bit taken aback that we were doing it in English because. Uh, I don't know why. Um, you also speak other wang languages as well. Yeah. Swedish, yeah. German. And Portuguese sign Portuguese language. Sign la wow. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, everything about me is about communication. Mm -hmm. uh, and so all the things that I do have to do with communication. So uh, to start with, I was trilingual as a child, as oh, a baby. Oh, wow. Trilingual. Trilingual with a wow. Swedish. It's a very rare thing. And then my English grandmother turned to my Swedish mother and said, why in heavens are you teaching the child a Scandinavian language in a Latin country? In English. Okay. So my mother sort of gave up a little bit, didn't concentrate. So I speak Swedish like a four-year-old. But, But you speak the, well. <laughs> yeah. <it's> something. <laughs> yeah, I can get by. But um, no, basically many people will uh, ask me, where is that accent from? Because I've got this quite strange English accent. Uh, and th I said that the correct question would be not be where, but when, because it's the English that my granny spoke when ah, she left yeah, London yeah. in the 30s. And so it doesn't practically exist anymore. It's ridiculous. But it, it has given me a lot of work. And uh, I got to storytelling through, basically through speech therapy in some way. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, my first job was working with deaf children and it was really hard work and so at the end of the session I would say would you like to play a game or would you like me to tell you a story and they always chose the story the story because it's more interesting probably I, I didn't know why mm -hmm. and, and that was five minutes at the end of the session and then suddenly it was 10 minutes and then it was 15 and then suddenly I had this moment where I realized that I could work on anything that I wanted to work on on speech therapy with stories and so then I started researching the connection between storytelling and language development and that led me to be to find that there was a library mm -hmm. where there was going to be an evening of storytelling for adults for adults yeah for adults that was odd for you to Very. know that 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 existed actually, yeah. And at the end of this session, I was completely floored. There was sort of 
I can do this. I can be here and listen to stories. And at the end of this session, the librarian said, and next week we're going to start a workshop of reading out loud. Who wants to go? Me. <laughs> <laughs> and you are the first one to put your hand up, for first, sure. First. And that led to a whole lot of workshops. And I realized that to listen to stories, which is my big passion, I, I wanted to be around storytellers. And so the best way to be around storytellers was also to tell stories myself. But the other day, I learned a funny uh, story. <coughs> uh, Duarte. Duarte, Duarte is here. <laughs> Give it up for Duarte. Yeah. Duarte is bringing mojitos, I believe. Oh, mojitos. yeah. Mojitos. Mojitos on legs. <laughs> <laughs> mojitos on legs. Please continue. And, uh, uh, but I realized that I've been telling stories for much longer than I thought I had. All right. Because I had this memory from childhood when my m parents went out to dinner mm -hmm. with friends. Um, Carmina, who was my second mother, she was the, the, the lady that looked after our house. Mm -hmm. She would come and look after us. And we would watch films. And uh, okay. she could not read. So uh -huh. she couldn't read the subtitles. So when there was an interval, which at that time there were much shorter intervals than now, because now you have more publicity even than the film. Well, yeah, but yeah. at the time they were short. I had to tell her <laughs> what had happened in Portuguese during that piece of the film. And so All basically right. I've been telling... During the break. So during the break. What, two minutes probably? Yeah. Tops? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so you had to... Condense. Condense everything and tell yeah. her what happened. Yeah. So actually. basically, I've been telling stories <laughs> wow. for much longer than I thought. And I just came to this realization sort of last week. And if any films that come 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 to your mind from back then? Uh, there, there was one particular one, which was very difficult, which was, I can't remember the name of the film, but it was a film with dolphins. And the dolphins were trained dolphins. to put mines on ships. They were trained. Oh, my God. Whoa. And it was, it <laughs> was, oh, uh, we were crying and crying. And I was trying to tell her what happened. And I was crying and crying. That I remember very, very well. Wow. So a very film with dolphins that were dolphins. trained to put bombs yeah. on ships. <laughs> wow. Sophie. Um, you 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 only paint with oil, or did you start with other uh, materials? Yeah, no, I started with acrylic. Acrylic paint, just because it's a bit more friendly. Uh, oil, you know, there is inviting. A, you can so. make oil go very very wrong. Mm. Um, so yes, I just sort of played with acrylic. Plus, my father had lots of acrylic, so I used to steal all of it all the time. <laughs> he, get, he, uh, he, he goes mad about it. every single time he buys a new paintbrush. I'm like, thank you, I'll have that. Yeah. I'll have that. That's for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll use this. Today, uh, so yeah, this it was week. great, but I couldn't get what I wanted out of mm. it. It's sort of, it's a nice, you know, it's for some people it's fantastic, but for what I wanted, uh, wasn't doing it. So yes, it moved to oil pretty quickly. And no, I love it. It's fantastic. What is a, uh, was it a starter for you, the acrylic? Yes, yeah, yeah. But now because your father he does watercolors. <laughs> He's mostly. watercolor oh, really? illustrator. So you come from a family of artists, is that it, or yeah. just your father? My father was in advertising, but he's oh, the right. most amazing illustrator. My mother's a fantastic artist as well. She paints more how to figurative work, but she's more exact. She can't paint. I can't paint something. If you ask me to paint this now, I mean, unless you want to look like, you know, two very androgynous <laughs> sort of goddess. Right. Well, I mean, I couldn't paint you. And that's not because I can't. It's because I don't want to. I want to paint from here. Yeah, of course. Uh, whereas head, my mother could there. paint all of you looking absolutely fabulously. And my, bro my, brother, my father could draw you all. Um, so, no, very lucky to come from that family, but my father and I always argue about art because he doesn't understand what I paint. He thinks that it's got no point to it as such. He's like, no point. Where's, where's the deck chair? Where's the lighthouse, Sophie? What is it? I'm like, come on, man, you've been to two art universities. Surely you could figure Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. No, but it's great because mm. it reconfirms what I do, and I think that's really important. You don't always want people to Yeah, and to discussion say, in general is like very, very I mean, healthy. When people say I, they like it, I'm like, yeah, okay, I know, I like it. I do. It's nice when people say, what is this? Why that? You know, to, to question not the, the big story behind mm. the painting, but your use of colour or composition or something like that. That's 
Mm. For me, that is a bit more of an interesting thing. And if somebody says, I don't like that, I'm like, why? I don't know, who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, um, it's quite nice to, to be challenged because I never went to art school. So I, I didn't have that body of people around you who, over a period of time, you question each other's works and you have debates and all this kind of stuff. So without realising it, I suppose, you confirm what you're doing. I didn't have that, so I've never been up against criticism. That's not because my work isn't worthy of criticism, it's just I've never put it in that particular yeah, yeah, type yeah. context. So, um, so my father's very good for that because my mother loves everything I do, but then that's because she's my mother. Oh, yeah, well, like, Tell well. you're amazing! Yeah. Like, oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> so you want to be challenged, is that, yes. is that correct? Yeah, yeah. But you ask for critic, uh, cr critics, or do you simply just let people see your work and then they might probably tell you something about your work? No, most people don't. I don't know whether it's... Most people don't. Most people don't say. You really have to dig deep for people to say that they don't mm. like something. I don't know whether that's because people feel that they don't want to be rude. I mean, I do have some people who say, oh, you should maybe not be working on figurative work. You should be working on this kind of work. It's more marketable. More it's more this more or it's more that. Mm. And, I see. And I'm like, well, that's crap. So... <laughs> Um, you know, I used to paint more abstract buildings and all that sort of stuff. But for me, they're a dime a dozen. There are some people out there who do it so incredibly well as well. You know, I'm like, look, I know I do. You guys have got it sussed. I'm not going to bother trying to, uh, to try and do that. So, um, so no, it is quite hard to get criticism. There are a few people in London that have given me pointers. But they're still, and I'm like, yeah, but tell me, you know. They're like, no, but it's you, it's you doing a thing. I can't say it's wrong. I'm like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> and in contrast, does the people here see your work diff completely differently from other parts of the world? Don't know. I don't, uh, no, I don't know. You did two exhibitions here, is that correct? Or more? No, one. One, just on one exhibition Yeah, just here. one here, then okay. the others in, in the mainland. Um, so, no, I don't really know what people's opinion of my work is here. I, I, I tend to keep myself to myself. I've realised that I'm a bit of a hermit. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, no, but I... <laughs> no, OK, so the people I know I'm very, very sociable with, but then I sort of do spend quite a large amount of time. Maybe that's having a child. That's you can most child. probably... Well, yeah, yes, that's yeah, it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it does sure. have something to do yeah. with that. The nightlife kind of gets killed a bit. Well, my personal opinion, I do like your work very Thank much. You. And uh, I really like the idea that your figurative uh, work is repre a representation of time. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, when do you paint the feminine body? Is... It's, it's because it's more visually interesting or is it because it's a mirror of your personal experiences? I hope it's not a mirror of my personal experiences mm. because the, the sh I haven't yet to meet anybody with such distorted bodies and I don't look at myself in that way. Um, no, it's, and they're not actually even females necessarily. All right. They really are Androgynous. Shapes. Yeah, yeah, they really are just shapes. I mean... The reason that they have heads and eyes is merely as a point of focus because you want to give something some emotion to, to and without the eyes. It can just be a lovely piece, you know, just a nice movement piece or something. But when you suddenly put eyes and a nose and lips in it, it kind of goes, oh, that makes me feel however it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. So that's really where the figurative thing came in before I so say they were just shapes and I thought I need more I need more from this it's not I'm not getting that it's just nice it's just a nice color piece it looks pretty okay great well done Sophie <laughs> so that's why I started putting yes eyes and more emotion in it. so that I was dictating oh, oh, mojitos, little, oh, mojitos. Yeah. Yeah. Mojitos. thank you very <laughs> much it's not good for the environment uh, no, straws okay. so chin 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 chin, 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 chin. Um, yeah um, yeah so I got to be able to dictate mm, a little bit more Duarte, amazing oh yeah, yeah. very amazing. good <laughs> sorry continue oh. uh, no just so so I got to dictate a little bit more mm how the painting was going to be interpreted. 
I don't like to do too much. That's why I don't like to tell too much about what it is because I really think the most fabulous thing about art is allowing the viewer to make up their own mind of what they want. Yes. I really don't like we're It's told, in a way a mirror of the person <laughs> looking yeah, at exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Like we're told so much about everything in this world, how to eat, how to dress, what to think, what not to do. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, no, just figure it out yourself. Like I have set, I think, a level of emotion in that. Mm -hmm. By that, I'm not saying I want to sort of conjure up this big, oh my God, but, but I've, for me, it translates this level of feeling. Okay, so I know that it's in there. It's not a soulless box. Now it's up to you to, to figure out the rest of it. So that's I have them a little bit in the stories, mm -hmm. in that oh, there right. are some, uh, some things that I leave to the listener's imagination. Yeah. So as much as possible, you want people to go on their own journey. Oh, yeah. And so you, um, if there's a princess, I'm going to say she's a beautiful princess. I'm not going to say she's blonde or, or blue eyed or yeah. uh, anything about her, except for the fact that she's then beautiful. She's beautiful yeah. and everyone and then, thinks of what's exactly. beautiful for them. And then and the, and it me makes people go on their own journey. The this this it's it's like a s synthesis. Yeah. Sort of you try to be as synthetic and concise as possible to allow and you do that with your yeah. painting as well to allow people to branch out. Oh, it's just the most lovely thing. It's like anyone will say, and not that I read many books actually, but the few books that I do read. Um, is when you read them, then of course you see a film. Everyone always says the book's better than the film. It's when have you ever heard of somebody saying, actually, that's the other way around? And yeah, as you're yeah, saying, yeah. it's because of the imagery that you yeah. have created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't want to say to somebody, this is exactly the outfit they're wearing, this is exactly this, that, 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 because it ruins your own creativity and everyone has it. Yeah. So you just want to allow somebody, yeah, yeah, the yeah, viewer, yeah. to feel, or the listener, to feel confident enough to, to use their own imagination. It's very interesting that you, so, Sophia, do uh, do that with uh, people or objects uh, to describe them in a way so vaguely that people can interpret it, uh, interpret everything uh, inside of them in their minds. But do you do that in actions or things that happened? Do you try to do that vaguely so? people can interpret yeah, you an action. You try not mm. to be redundant mm. in that if I say they ran, mm. I, I don't do the gesture of running. So I just say okay. they ran. Or I might do a very sort of um, a little bit like uh, a little bit like cartoons. I'll just say and he and then you know that he ran. All right. Uh, I see. You yeah, try yeah, not to be redundant in that you try to be as economical as possible that you're not saying the same thing twice in two different ways. Mm. Uh, and, and I think that is exactly to keep it as open as possible. And in a way, it's very visual as well. So you're yeah. working with your hands, with your expressions as well. So you're a very facially expressive person. So I think yeah. you might not realize how much you are telling just with the slight. You I know, do. You're, you're I not do. standing up there running I, with I your do, faces. But, but I do that from the moment that I've been asked to tell a story in a mask yeah. and you see that people are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I do. Uh, I have a project here in, in Funchal. I work for a company. I do these. Uh, walking food and wine tours where mm -hmm. I tell stories along the way and uh, sort of a group of tourists comes with me and I tell them the story of the food and the drink and the and the city and and I love it but I have to do that so I, I will tell them at the beginning look it is a rule we have to wear the mask and everything but when we st so I can't walk and talk at the same time mm -hmm. and then what I do is I get myself really distant from them take off the mask and shout it yeah. because I know that a lot of my communication is nonverbal. a lot very of it very yeah. interesting uh, how much do you work with facts and fiction or is it very very mixed up everything with me, it's mixed it up. Mixed it up. Really mixed up. I, I'm, I'm mixed up. So uh, I once had someone 
accuse me, a real purist accuse me, say... Real purist, is that a thing? Yeah. Mm. The, uh, in storytelling as in well. In storytelling. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, uh, uh, someone that was from the depths of the Alentejo turns to me and mm. says, Tu no es carne nem es peixe. You're neither meat nor fish. Which is an expression in Portuguese to say, you're n- sort of, you're, you're indefined, you're, mm. you're, you're not pure. So and it's I said, no, really. no, it's, it's in not a way. at all a nice say, thing. It's, it's a nice. really, and, and mm. I just, and I, it, it sort of hit me and I said, uh, looked at her and I said, no, I am fish, I'm meat, I'm shrimp, I'm lettuce, I'm everything. everything. Because I'm such a mix yeah. that I, in me, there is everything. Yeah. And, and that is also something very Madeiran. There's, we are culturally, we are Christian. Then you have a load of English influence. You have geographically, we're, we're African. Mm-hmm. Uh, biologically, we're Macaronesian. Uh, we're European. And it, we're just a very big mix. Yeah, yeah. So in my, in my family, we have how many continents? We have uh, Europe, Asia, Africa, and North America. So four continents represented in, in, in the last four generations. Yeah. So how can, how can I not be a mix and mix things up? But I don't know. It's, I think it's very globally uh, cultural that people should stay in their own boxes and you do this and you are this and you are this and this and oh, this. Oh, please, let's but just break that, those boxes. Yeah, <laughs> just th- Let's gone. break the box, yeah. yeah. Out no, of the no, box, no, no, let's no. be out of the yeah, boxes. Yeah, yeah, no. No, and with, with, with storytelling, luckily in Portugal, people are very free. So, for example, in the States, which was actually where the storytelling as an art, uh, mm. as a performing art uh, began, in the late 80s, there they have this obsession with political correctness. So they cannot tell a traditional story of a tradition that is not their own. So for example, if they tell a Native American story, all hell breaks loose because it's cultural appropriation. Mm. All right. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, Okay. Uh, in England, it's the absolute opposite. You can only tell what is of your culture. So I had the absolute um, co- uh, situation. I went to tell at this festival, and it was a Portuguese friend of mine and a friend of mine who is a psychoanalyst from Buenos Aires, as urban as urban can be. And so when she's going on stage, they suddenly look at her and say, where's your poncho? Where's your mate? And, and she's looking at them saying, it's, it's, you have to tell the stories of where you're from. In Portugal, we're luckily very free. So very free. to answer your question, I mix traditional stories from Madeira and Portugal and all over the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tell personal stories. So stories of my family and stories, things that have happened to me, things... Um, that I know of from Madeira about characters that we see in the street and things like that and I also could tell literary stories the thing that we are try to be as careful with as possible is that we honor our sources so say that I heard this story from such and such I read this story in such and such a book uh, this is a story from a culture very different from our own and honor mm and be be respectful of those those sources that's my answer nice nice no, really great answer uh, about you sophie uh, do you you find that uh, there are people that <coughs> try to put you in the box but you break the box uh, uh, at the beginning of everything so you must do everything abstract or everything figurative way you oh, can't yeah. do anything mixed up yeah no there's amounts of people that say you you know you won't succeed or you can't make any money if you paint like this and you've got to do that the most the biggest contending factor i've had is not going to art school and the amount of people that have said to me so i've gone to them i said like a gallery for instance mm. what do you think of my work love it you know, what sort of price point, this kind of price point, yep, fab, 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 fab. But the fact that I haven't been taught apparently doesn't value me as an artist. It means that... Just because you weren't... 
you just didn't because go I to haven't the art, got to the art school. art school from Slade, St Martin's, whatever it may be, mm. means that my opinion on art, my technical application can't be that good. It's not actually about my painting. I've come to realise that what I paint doesn't really mean anything in terms of your being respected as an artist. Where you went to school and the part of my was bullshit behind you is apparently more important. Which is something that, there's part of me that I thought, oh God, I've got to go to art school. You know, I've, I've got to fit into that box. And then I thought, no, 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 hold on a bloody second. This is the one thing that I almost pride myself on, the fact that yeah. the reason I can paint the way that I can paint now is with bloody hard work, quite frankly. Yeah. And also, and you've been painting in a way and being uh, um, in the midst of painters since you were born. But exactly. So you've actually had that. more experience, more access, more input. Than a lot of people that went to art Many people that went to I grew to up in like a photographic studio. You know, we had a massive, I was, grew up around artists and after school I'd do wood lathing and turning and stuff. You know what I mean? It was all, since day one it was creative. And my father always just said to me, Sophie, look, if you want to know more about history of art, read. If you want to become a better painter, mm. paint more. Yeah. Is it simple? Just do it. Uh, but unfortunately, that, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, a lot of people go, no, 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 you know, we can't value you unless you've done this, you, unless you've done that. I'm like, oh, do you know what? I, w I just think it's just such a pile of shit. I really do, you do. Feel, do you feel that the art market in general, and it's a really big box, doesn't want you? Oh, brutal question. <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know. Um, I know, I don't know. You feel like, I, I'm not saying oh, that it's a fact. You feel no. like they don't want you, the art market in general. Because of that no, specific because they're all thing. about money and quite frankly I sell very well, so. But to pri privately, correct? So, no, uh, if you want no, to no. exhibit in a, in a great, in, in a big gallery or something like that, you always have that problem of not going to art school. No, because what, art school. if you don't go in that way then you just have to go in via sales and they want a long track record of sales. Um, mm. Most people just get in through those things through how I know because they know somebody who when they went to art school with somebody who's got into their mother's a director. Yeah, and they the could be a teacher and so the teachers have that invested exactly. in them. They so. get spotted at their degree show or whatever. Um, but no, I'm gonna stick to my guns and you know, it will it will happen. But you know, I know people that are in very good galleries and they don't sell any paintings. Yeah. So, so what's the point? The point is to sell and with but they're, they're through your heart. But they're respected as an artist, but they can't afford to actually paint. Yeah. So I don't know. I really don't know what the right situation. I just know what I want to do. So that's what I'm doing. Very good. Very good. Uh, what are the struggles and pleasures of being here in the island? Is it something very difficult to sell? You can't to sell get anything here. here. You can't get anything. <laughs> I love this island, but you can't. For me, you can't, I can't get anything. I always have to, and I really am very much, as we were saying earlier, about trying to support the community and be a part of things. And I really can't get anything here. I, everything I have to ship on, and I always have to ship everything out. Uh, there isn't. And what, that art materials. Yes, so expensive oh, you to get, get stuff here. And oh, then what you can get, I the see. quality of the stuff. Unfortunately, no disrespect to any of the art suppliers here, but it's really bad. Mm. And I can't put the price that I do and do my work with that sort of level of material, yeah. unfortunately. And it's not, I always go into the art shops. I'm like, come on, please. I don't like, no. Occasionally, I, if I can, I would try and do my bit, but that's my, that's my big struggle here, is always having to think. And it goes against what I believe in <laughs> as well, so. Yeah. But yeah. And the pleasure is uh, the inspiration that you have around you, for sure. Pleasure is the cool little restaurants, the little Tashkas, with a nice ah. drink and a little homemade ah. lingua <laughs> sandwich or something like that, with a nice homemade cider, you know. That's a good pleasure. And do you like Porsche? I do like Poncha. I try not to drink them so much anymore because, you know, I try and stay sober. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite helpful when you well, have a child. Well, good luck. Glampada <laughs> has very great drinks uh, prepared yeah. there oh, yeah. by Duarte. <laughs> Duarte. Duarte knows how, how you can get to that level. It's very, very nice, yeah. It's quite early as well. What so about you, Sophia? I think it's, uh, it's uh, 
uh, your biggest pleasure is that you have lots of stories that you told uh, us uh, in the beginning. Mm. What are your struggles, you think? Well, going back to the advantages again, um, mm -hmm. the because the, the only struggle for me is uh, to make a living because I'm an, an, I'm an only mother, so that is something. Mm -hmm. And y you looked surprised when I said storytelling for adults. This is what I do. People are always very surprised about that. They don't, yeah. they think that I only tell for children. And I love telling for children, but uh, mostly uh, if I can choose, I will choose telling to teenagers, which I love. Okay. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. Uh, teenagers. Your teenagers. Friendly, uh, teenagers. Because right. you get into the room and you say that you're going to tell stories and they go, oh. I was going to say hard audience, I would have thought. And then by the middle, they're eating out of your hand and at the end, they're going, more stories, more stories. Wow. And, and that is, there's nothing like that for the and ego. You're pleasantly they're pleasantly surprised. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As we're told, you, you told, you're told yeah. off camera that the best, the best way to be surprised is to be pleasantly surprised yeah, yeah. and there they, they, so that's why you like it more is yeah, that yeah, they are yeah. pleasantly surprised yeah because uh, usually they our, have no idea what they're coming uh, uh, adults uh, is also fascinating uh, also something that I one of the struggles that I have here is that I would love I would love to be able to take time out of my week sort of one or two days a week to just go out into the countryside and go to the Tashkesh mm. and collect stories. This is, yeah. uh, I, it is urgent that someone does this. But of course, you can't do it for free. We, we I need to live, so I, I, I really can't. I, I do seven jobs at the same time what? in order seven to be. Seven jobs? A, no, it's I, 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 here in Madeira. I can't live exclusively from from storytelling, and so that that would be if if I had a wish would be that someone would say, look, we want to publish a book on Madeira's story, so here's the money that you need. Just go out, go and drink some Porsches in this countryside <laughs> and yeah, get us the because stories. Because in order to collect stories, you have to live them as yeah, well. Yeah. No, and there's something very important, which is to get stories, you need to tell stories. So, for example, I work with Shirabanda mm -hmm. and Shirabanda, they are amazing. They have done 40 years of collecting uh, 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 songs mm, from yeah. around the island. And they do have a couple of stories. But the thing is, as they do not specialize in stories, they are bits of story. And also people will be more generous with their stories if you tell them a story. And so that's why it's always better if I go along. Mm -hmm. And um, and also our contact with nature. This place is magical. Full of nature. It is Full magical of nature. because even in the depths of depression of the confinement, where we were all sort of, all we wanted was some uh, some kind of hope, some kind of, brightness some kind of life and there you have you look in your garden or you look over the wall at the bananas and the rain on the banana leaves and it, it's just magical the way this earth produces mm. the chemistry it's just magical Nature in and general. that that is something that is highly inspiring this energy that comes from from nature here in Madeira. And I hope this set of Rulampad is also inspiring. Oh, yeah. We have several These are friends here. that I know very well. Even plants in our drink. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's everywhere. Nature is everywhere. And I was very touched when I saw your website, Sophie, and I saw uh, two, I think, two paintings of Fanal. Oh, yeah. Is it your favorite place in Madeira? One of, yes. One of. One of. I know, I, I think it's... It was just such a surprise when you go and start exploring the island, you end up seeing these trees there and that landscape. And I'm like, this place is ridiculous because you are literally, you can see anything and everything here. One minute you're in somewhere that you're going to go, I feel like I'm in Scotland. Yeah, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden Whoa. I feel like I'm in, I'm in Thailand or, you know, the amount of times that I felt like I was in, in Asia, especially in like Seychelles, that landscape yeah. going down. Yeah. This is not, I shouldn't, it's just so weird. So for me, from the landscape that I grew up seeing, I'm not saying that for now is like that, but it was a lot sort of 
greener helium trees and stuff. So when I went out there, I was like, this is a big freaking surprise. And I just had to paint that in my own way. Yeah, it's very beautiful, very, nice. very beautiful paintings. Um, and on a more personal note, I met you, Sophia, uh, in, uh, in a little adventure we did for Madeira Film Festival on Palir Ferreiro, if I'm not, uh, if I'm correct. Yeah. And uh, we were surrounded by these beautiful plants and beautiful trees and everything. Uh, and I'm not sure if there's uh, a dragon tree there, but I, I, I'm in love with dragon trees. And you are a dragon tree lover as well. I'm a dragon tree warrior. Oh. Dragon tree warrior. What's wrong with Madeira's dragon trees? Uh, What's wrong is they need a little bit more tender, loving care. They, uh, the cochinilla, the mealybug, um, mm. the lapa has been absolutely terrible this year. Um, and they need help. They need help. They need to be cleaned. They need to be treated. Uh, there are some very old trees that are, that are suffering. And uh, so they need to be looked after. Uh, the dragon tree is one of one of the original uh, trees that we had here on the island. It's an amazing plant. It's not a tree in itself. In English, it's called dragon tree, but it's not really a tree. Mm. So if you cut it, you won't see rings to tell its oh, age. Oh, right. It's it's a plant actually of the asparagus family, I think. And uh, okay. the way to tell the age of a dragon tree, approximate age, is uh, every 10 or 15 years, it flowers. And when mm. it flowers, it branches. So if you count the amount of times it branches, uh. you get an approximate age. So every time it branches is 10 or 15 years, uh, depending on, I believe, the generosity of the environment so mm. if it is happy it's fine mm -hmm. so it will only flower every 15 years if it is dry and it needs more it feels oh i'm not so comfortable here then it will be more urgent and then it will flower every 10 years which is funny that it is so you're saying so the, the, those big ones that you see in town yeah those massive ones they are very, very, centuries very, old. very old. old. Centuries old. Very old. Blimey. They, they think that we have only one remaining wild specimen, hmm. uh, and that is hanging on a cliff in Khyber Brava. There were three, but then in 2010, two of them fell. Are they going to prop this one up, do you think? They have propped it up, and they did something else really special. The botanical garden has a wonderful seed bank, and so they collected seeds from the ones that fell, and they have replanted them and they have gone on the rock face in Ribera Brava oh, and replanted yeah, them. Yeah. Not only love. there, but in other places. I really love the dragon trees. Visually, yeah. they are stunning. Uh, and there's some kind of safe uh, called blood, uh, dragon tree blood. Is that a thing? Dragon's right? blood. Dragon's blood. Dragon's blood. Yeah. The dragon, it, dragon trees were it, a, a mm. very well kept secret. And this is why they were all killed off because they were very, very precious. This dragon's blood is the sap of the, the sap, plant. Yeah, safe when the sap, it, yeah, yeah. When it comes into a contact with oxygen, it oxidizes, mm -hmm. and this is, I think you should try to paint with it. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was telling, uh, a, I was, uh, telling about this because blood. I've seen a couple of works when the artists used uh, dragon's, dragon's sap uh, to, to paint, and it's, Beautiful. What the color is it? It's rust red. Yeah. It's, and this oh, this nice. uh, beautiful this uh, this sap was incredibly precious. It was used to color wigs in Victorian times, <laughs> clothes, and some people say that the Stradivarius violin sounds the way it sounds because it has dragon's wow. blood in the varnish. All right, I didn't know so that. So it was used a lot also to color varnish for furniture. Right. Yeah. It's super interesting plant. We learn something every day, don't we? So you brought uh, objects, one each, and I wanted to bring them into this conversation and uh, for you to explain why did you bring that object? Wanna wanna start, Sophie? Oh, but I'm wearing my object. I wear it every day. All right. Which What's the? Just it's the ring. It's the ring. Yes, not this ring. This little ring here. 
little band. It's got a little star and a stone in the centre. And a little finger. Little. Okay. Oh, it was my godmother gave it to me, and she unfortunately is no longer with us. Um, she was a force to be reckoned with. And I, I just thought, she actually terrified me when I was growing up. Um, but she was a mad, foodie, art lover. I suppose, in, I suppose there was lots that I admired about her, but I didn't quite, I was, wasn't at that age when I was analysing people like, quite like that. But now looking back on it, um, I'm like, God, I wish I, that she had been, I wish I could have a chat with her now, because yeah. I know she's the kind of person that if she got annoyed with you, she'd miss probably... <laughs> what? <laughs> she was, you know, tough, tough lady, but <laughs> quite impressive at the what same time. Name? Juliet Cole. Yeah, she. Um, Juliet. Yeah, really scared the crap out of me to be quite honest with you growing up. <laughs> but I loved her, and yes, and this is. Uh, it's bizarre, isn't it? How you don't necessarily have to know somebody incredibly well for them to have a long lasting impact on you. And I really genuinely, hand on heart, think about them on an incredibly regular basis, mm. which is strange considering, say she wasn't my bestest friend growing up and she died when we were 40 or something like that, you know what I mean? She died when I was about 16 years old and she scared me up until that point, so. But she obviously but made an there. incredible impression. And every time yeah. I go to the department store and I, I go past her rack of scent, I always smell it. Oh. And I'm always going, oh. it's really funny, isn't it? It's, but she just, and that's, that's a feeling that I can't, I would never want to let go of it, but it's, it's, it's a strange one. So yes, that's one of my very, very precious objects. Wow, great object. So I hope that I don't lose What it. about you? <laughs> yeah, um, you, you will not, certainly not lose the, it, sure. <laughs> what about you, Sophia? Um, I, I, you told me as I was leaving the house. All right. And so you I grabbed just, the first thing. Well, it wasn't the first thing. It's something that I usually have in my bag and that I didn't have in my bag at the moment because I had washed my bag and hadn't re put everything in my bag that usually is in my bag. Um, I don't know why, but it is very useful. It's a very strange object. People usually look at me very weirdly when I use it. And I will use it in a queue in the supermarket, on a train, anywhere that it is needed. And um, it was something that I got in Andansage. And Andansage is something very close to my heart. It is a dance festival uh, that happened, used to happen, I don't know if it's coming back, in first in São Pedro do Sul, in the north of Portugal, and then it changed to the Alentejo. And um, it is a wonderful, it's a week where you learn, you do workshops during the day to learn a certain dance, sort of traditional European, sort of world dances. Uh, and then at night there are live concerts where you put into practice what you learned. And it's got this wonderful vibe to it. People are camping, uh, everyone eats together. It is super, quite hippie-like, uh, okay. but very fresh with loads of kids around. And uh, there's a market, there's uh, bars, there's... Uh, and this is something that I picked up at one of these handicraft shops that had other stuff, other things. All right. And it is strange because if I say that it what it is, people have no idea what I'm talking about. So if I tell you this is a flute. Okay. Rather strange shape. Very strangely flute. shaped flute. And it has something it doesn't have all those holes to make With and, the sound, and yeah. yeah the, the and difference. this bit is quite different. And then if I tell you it's a nose flute, then you look at me as if I'm absolutely insane. A nose flute. A nose flute. Shall I show you how it works? Please. Show <laughs> us. Do you want to tell me the name of a tune that you want me to play on this? Uma música que achas que a Sofia possa tocar para nós. Baby Shark. Baby Shark? No, now you're making me laugh and I can't do it. <laughs> 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 
Whoa! That's amazing! <laughs> so you put your nose on the top part. You put your nose on the top part, uh -huh. and the air comes out here, and it's modulated by the resonance of the of shape of your mouth. So it's very intuitive. You can do any note you want. <laughs> and does this so in in if there's a baby crying in the queue in the supermarket it you, this you will it automatically is totally irresistible it's not it is totally <laughs> <laughs> she wants to buy it right away <laughs> she has two beautiful ch children and uh, she will sure we need that when they are crying no, it is, uh, it, 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 well, yeah it is quite brilliant so that's my object and it, wow. it's, it's just how something so simple can break energy and change energy and this is what we've always got to think about is that if we bring just a little bit of music just a little bit of beauty just a little bit of happiness and joy uh just it's anything is possible so there's a there's a there's a, a, a very famous portuguese artist called almada Negreiros, and yeah. he has this sentence that for me is it is my motto and he says alegria é a coisa mais séria da vida so joy is the most serious thing in life and this uh, is something that i take very very seriously so that's just my little, wow that's my little nose flute wow great object and, and great story <laughs> story tell, story tell, a storyteller telling a story is always <laughs> very inspiring. So, in order for us to end our conversation here in Rilampada, I have a totally, or maybe not, uh, random question. How do you feel when you enter a church? Uh, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank so you, you feel right. like you're <laughs> watching a theatre going on, is that correct? On the paintings and... I'm really things. inspired by churches, churches, or any any religious sort of architecture or place of worship. The call of prayer for something for me is something that blows me away. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely love I it. I love it. I'm not a religious person, it. and I hope I don't offend anybody. Maybe me neither, but, but I really love... Uh, everything about the church. I love them and here and I think you've got some amazing churches and I know that when you I've had some conversations with people about and I say how I think lots of aspects of the emotion evoked in in a place of worship um, it's very inspiring towards me some people then go oh but do you understand what it comes up to and you're like no 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 no, I'm not really because I'm not a religious person I'm really not looking at it and maybe that's very offensive to some people I hope it's not but um, the artwork in it, the vibe that you get from it, it's just, especially as somebody not looking at the context of the words and the thing, just literally the images that are created. Quite spectacular. Yeah, it's a theatre, as say, you say. On this island, some of the little, little churches you go into, I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. There's one in Prazeiras. Oh the my church God, I just spilled my drink on me. Oh, well, everything can happen in Lampada. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Smell There's like a brewery. You, you already had beanies water on your jeans. I know, yeah. I'm so always covered in something delightful, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if not paint. It's, it's usually paint. Like it's usually paint. paint. It's usually paint. paint. It's yes. paint, yeah. Or in our fingernails, the two of us are also gardeners, so it's... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's also <laughs> forever well manicured. <laughs> Yeah, as I was telling, there's one church uh, in uh, Prazeres that has very interesting sea wing uh, paintings as well. So you should check it out when you oh, okay. get there. Yeah. What about you, Sophia? How do you feel when you enter a church? I have very mixed feelings. All right. Be it depends on the church or church churches in general. Churches in general, in general. because I I didn't have the best of experiences with. Uh, you see, in my family, we don't really have a religion, but I was baptized as Protestant because I have no idea. And it it just, I don't know. I really don't know. Because, and then they put me in a nun's school, a uh, 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 collegio. Mm -hmm. And it was not easy. 
I was put outside when they had masses, so sitting on a bench alone outside. Uh, there were a couple of situations that weren't very friendly. So that is the negative part that I feel when I visit a church. And then, but there, I am fascinated by faith. Fascinated by this, this, it, I think it was Rabin Nath Tagore that says something like, faith is what makes birds sing in the morning, even before the break of day. It's mm -hmm. still dark. It's still dark. It's just before the day, but they're already singing. And faith is that. It's, it's this, and that fascinates me. Uh, and then another thing is honoring the hours of work, the, the workmanship, the dedication that people had to just make these things that are so beautiful, so intricate, and that took a lot, a lot of time mm. and energy to make. And so the, there's a whole energy thing that is, is uh, and some are lovely and cool when you go in in the summer. Um, mm -hmm. There's a sort of, it, I have mixed feelings. It's a mix of fascination and then a little bit of uh, this, this really strong uh, tradition. I went the other day to a uh, christening mm -hmm. of two children underneath, under one year old, so really very young. Hmm. And hmm. in during the service, when I started counting, the priest said the word sin 45 times. 45. Oh my God. So this, the, this is the something emphasis. I cannot. Oh, fabulous, thank you. It, 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 it's it, always in the, the emphasis, they emphasize negative. Yeah. The, the and negative. so for me, I, I try to keep on the light side and see the beauty and... and, and they always and bring you to the dark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so Paolo's, Paolo's had exactly that. When we've been talking about schools for Bean and stuff, and I said, what about that or what about that and he's like he said because so many of the, he, he's like you he said they were all sort of brought up with this big heavy it's weight heavy. of religion on it's the, and heavy and because I never had that I mean I went to a church of England school but god we went to church at Easter Christmas you know what I mean we just went for the, the big things for the you know children you went because of the celebrations afterwards not you know. yeah, yeah, yeah and he's like so if you've got to understand that there's a very very different attitude and mentality yeah, because with it's, people it's here much there, so. it's much more recent yeah. that people are getting out of it yeah i think yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it's opinion, yeah. still very heavy, very black, very shawl on the head, hidden. This uh, well, Adam sinned, and now humanity has to live with I liked, sin. I liked how he said it was Adam. Uh, uh, yeah. Usually, we're accused because it was Eve, eh? Huh? Uh, no, it, well, they say that Eve told Adam to eat the apple, the forbidden fruit, but Adam was the one that did the action. I mean, why am I? so serious all of us <laughs> anyway thank you so much no, well i know why because mm. you have a plant beside you which is very very interesting yes. that in uh, in portuguese is called adam's rib and that is oh, a yeah. very very beautiful plant of joanna's from uh, thank you joanna for your plants yeah. this one is really, a very, very special, special. Very, very special, special. and I that's why you went for Adam. Adam. That's why you went to Adam. So that's fine. <laughs> ah, so There's always a very reason. Unconscious There's always a reason. Very metaphysical yeah. and everything. <laughs> so again, thank you so much that you ca came here to Relampada to the Thunder Slap uh, Talk Cast. It's a mix between ta a talk show and a podcast. I hope that the conversation was, was pleasant and very it was productive. Indeed. Thank and you very much. And that we uh, learned Just something new. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. And uh, agora mudando de Uh, de, de língua. Idioma. Espero que tenham gostado e até à próxima. Relampada!